Hello and welcome to New World Comics Podcast. I am uh, Buck Berlin, uh, leader of said New World Comics, uh, I guess, uh, store and podcast. What? Joining me with me is Stephanie Cerny. The real leader of everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad Reed, voice of God of Nerds to Men fame. Blessings. <laughs> Everyone uh, go check out that uh, that podcast and uh, like the page, subscribe. It's really good sometimes that I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, joined with us this week is Steve Kerr. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. Aww. So, my giant, uh, why don't you tell everyone uh, who you are and what you do? Well, I am Bucks Giant, um, coming in at six foot five. That is exactly what I do. Um, I was the first Amazo winner. I remember <laughs> hearing that mentioned on one of the previous podcasts. Um, and then also, I work out at the Oklahoma City Zoo, running their membership department. Ooh! I know I'm fancy. I have an adult <laughs> job doing adult things. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you've you've done quite a bit of stuff around here. Like you, uh, you know, until your your schedule kind of got too much. You used to help us pull comics. I used to pull comics. I uh, started the big sort of 2014. Yeah, yeah. The the because uh, the the back room was just spilling out <laughs> everywhere. Yes, it was. Yeah. I helped out with that, and then also. Um, your your office. Yeah. There was one time that we got his office clean. Yep. You could go to the back and, uh, I know, <laughs> the surprise look from Tom, but um, <laughs> you could actually get to the very back of it, and we had things lined up, like the expensive action figures and that are now on display. Yeah. And uh, w- what's fun about the, the office, like, very rarely will I put anything back there that, that really hinders movement. Right. Uh, anyone who's helping out just goes and throws stuff, uh, you know, right in the, the front way of it. So, yeah. <sighs> some <That> people, office. <laughs> some people's mm-hmm. children. Right. Yeah. I mean, it. you know, every, we, we call it the office because it used to actually be an office. It, it's more just kind of glorified storage now. Just out of curiosity, how old is that computer back there? Uh, it's still... It, <laughs> Uh, it runs DOS, if that gives you... It does. Like, I have the little, uh, prompt code <laughs> on the front. Uh, anytime that we had to use... Because that, that's what they used to type out the, uh, the subscription forms on. And anytime that you, uh, wanted to get on the computer, you literally had to wait for it to warm up. Wow. Yeah, in the wintertime, because, like, that's where the, the heat kind of focuses mm-hmm. most in that room. Uh, it, it works like nobody's, you know... Yeah, it, it, yeah, it it, uh, it it was wonderful. And then in the summertime, whenever it was cooler in the room, mm-hmm. uh, it took forever to get it going. I'd have to imagine. Yeah, but uh, luckily we don't use that anymore. It, it's it's still there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it plays a mean minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, you you uh, you know would uh, would help out with uh, you know sorting. Or, I mean, pretty much anything that we would... Yeah, know. anything that I was asked to do. Um, happy to help out. I mean, it's comic books. It's sorting comic books. It's, you know, reliving memories each cover that you see. Um, yeah. So I was happy to do it. Yeah, and then uh, then there was, you know, dressing up for superhero school, which uh, we'll, we'll get to after we talk about uh, some other key points, because you, you are one of the longest-running uh, uh, players in the superhero school. I believe I am. Yeah, it's... Uh, you Back know. in the alphabet days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Galen, uh, Galen's number one, and then there's, then there's you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, whenever he gets back in the country, we'll have, we'll have Galen on. Uh, but uh, let's get to the, the next point that I wanted to get to. How did you get into comics? I'm going to have to say TV. Um, TV played a large portion of that. I mean, growing up in, you know, the 80s, um, early 90s, we had the amazing Batman film from 1989, um, X-Men the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, got to plug that in. (laughs) Um, And it it was just a great time. I mean, you were surrounded by it. And then to find out that there are comics, you know, actual physical books to read, um, I would trade comics um on the school bus um randomly i was i I picked up a uh x-men book from the school fair like third fourth grade and uh this kid was like i will trade you three comic books for that one book was it the one that like wolverine's on the cover running yes oh yeah that guide yeah 
That was an amazing one. Oh, it, it was so well written, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the great thing is, is, you know, I just eventually went back to that same book fair and got another copy. But I also <laughs> got um, three comic books out of it, including my very first issue of Superman, number 25. Um, it was kind of a weird introduction because on the front, it looks like Superman has killed Lois Lane on the Daily Planet newsroom floor. Which you got out of book fair? Uh, no, this actually came yeah. from a friend. Um, yeah, that, that's the one that he uh, he traded the kid on the bus. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. it was that uh, an issue of Shadow of the Bat. Um, I vaguely remember it was about uh, Batman being in a castle, a Scottish castle of all things. <laughs> and um, the and it was like, what do I do? Because it was uh, the Scottish gentleman was mentally challenged but committed a murder. So it was very of mice and men. Which blew my fourth grade mind, because not having read of Mice and Men yet, um, didn't understand the implications. And is like, what does Batman do when the person that murdered somebody doesn't realize what they did? Man, yeah, it, that's pretty heavy stuff. But, uh, man, as a kid, any time I got Shadow of the Bat, I didn't realize that it wasn't part of the overall right? continuity. And I got so upset. Like, it was, it was <laughs> oh, man, what is wrong with this comic series? Because, you know... <laughs> Uh, a lot of comics way back then, you know, you could just pick up an issue and read and, and be fine. Typically. Uh, but, like, Shadow of the Bat was, like, we have two or three issues and, and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, still one of the greatest things because it wasn't so much a Batman title, but how the world reacted to Batman. Right. Which I loved. And they did a similar series with Spider-Man, which was really good, too. Yeah, the Tangled Web. Yes. Yeah. That was good stuff. Yeah, it, I guess it just didn't lend itself as well. That's true. You know, with Spider Man, you I mean, know, it is Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, for those that uh, uh, don't realize, Steve is not the biggest Spider Man fan. Which, uh, but don't hold it against him because uh, he makes uh, makes up for it in spades uh, when we get talking about Superman. Which uh, actually, why don't we just uh, go into uh, your your Superman love? Okay. Um, this Superman number twenty five really started it all. Um, I mean, the Lois and Clark, New Adventures of Superman, seeing Dean Cain bring Superman to life. Um, ever since then, I mean, Superman hat. I've got a Superman wallet. Um, and a surprise coming later um, to the <laughs> New World fandom. Um, but um, that really led into my parents got me the, uh, a subscription at the time, which um, this was early 90s. And for those that don't remember, uh, Superman featured the Superman emblem on his cover, and it, they would tell 52 stories just spread out over the year. There was one Superman comic for every single week. Um, and so I had this subscription for years. It was a Christmas present or a birthday present for my parents. I'm not sure which. But there was a brief overlap in that um, this is the little emblem um i missed an issue which actually brought me into new world comics for the very first time to pick up this issue um so it's an interesting story it's about the sun going out and superman's powers are based on the sun uh so it's like how is he getting by without his powers but i had to find out what was going on so uh my dad actually driving by one time found this place and uh i came in and picked up my missing issue and since then i've been a pretty regular customer and that was back in 1996 that's about the time that i started coming yep. here regularly too i remember some of our conversations from back in the day you were <laughs> yeah. somebody of my same age because most of the people in the store at that time were older oh, yeah yeah you know when i first started coming around like we were definitely a rarity Oh, yes. Like, it, it was all, uh, you know, older white guys that were, you know, 30 to 50. Yes. And that was that was pretty much it. Very much that. Yeah. So, but uh, it, it's it's all different now. So, it is. It's yeah, nice it, to it's, see. There's a life yeah, to the, the store. Yeah, there, there's, you know, every, uh, every age range you could imagine, every walk of life, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, anyone and everyone is, is into it now. So, that's real cool. Yes, it is. But, uh, so... Before we get into more of your your issues on uh, like specific issues, I have so many issues with <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Superman? Like, like you know, I mean, some people are Spider Man guys, some people are Batman guys, some people are Flash guys. 
for Superman and me, it was um, the ability to inspire hope. Um, really, just with Batman, it was doom and gloom. With Spider-Man, it was always overcoming adversity. And I just got sick of that. Um, so I did try Spider-Man, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, to have a character that every time he turned around, people were looking up to him. Um, and because he was doing these great things with these great powers, and there was even a Superman storyline where he could have become king of the world, but he didn't. Um, he just continued doing good in hopes of inspiring others. Um, I kind of took that on as a mantra myself and uh, led to me dressing up as Superman <laughs> for kids. Yeah. It's uh, it's what you do, right? Yeah, which we'll, we'll get into more on that uh, soon after we get to this. But yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's it's always kind of interesting because, you know, most people are, are kind of Batman guys because, you know, he, you know, looks cool. Like, he looks like the bad guy, you know, and he's the, the light and the darkness. Right. You know, whereas Superman is just the light. Like, he is... Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's easier to write a Batman story. Like, it's, you know, um, it, it's almost a lazier job right. write, writing a Batman story because it's so relatable. Whereas with Superman, uh, you know, everyone's, well, you know, for for one reason or another, uh, uh, for one reason or another, he's a you know a little passe, a little you know cliched anymore. But uh, you know, like uh, there are you know writers that that you know take that and do that. Oh wait, no, here's the other you know things that you're not taking into account on this. Right, which sadly are few and far between. But um, forgive me if I mispronounce this. Peter Thomas says, uh, "Run, Thomas, yeah." Tomasi? Yeah, uh, the, the one that just wrapped up. Yes. Amazing. Well, yeah. And, Absolutely amazing, because he understood. Right, and, and uh, he played it up that, uh, and he used uh, Jonathan as a, a foil, uh, you know, Superman's son, as here we are teaching why the world needs Superman. Yes. Um, you know, like, Jonathan would go off and do something, like he would, you know, accidentally fry his cat with his heat vision, and, uh, you know, Superman would... would find a teaching lesson or, you know, a moment yep. to, to, to teach. And he would explain that, you know, um, he is Clark Kent, but Superman is so much more than him. And Superman has to be this thing that everyone can look up to. And it's up to them to, uh, foster that and, and, mm -hmm. you know, use it to inspire everyone. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, enough of that. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear some more of your, uh, Moving right along, yeah. um, Superman number 150, um, it was kind of the end of the soap opera era of Superman, and I'll get to that soap opera era in just a bit, but um, this was Jan Jurgens' final issue, and I disregard the new 52 Dan Jurgens run, <laughs> so this was his final issue, um, and it's basically a done-in-one telling you know everything that he's ever wanted to say with Superman. And it's just phenomenal. I highly recommend that to anyone. You know, I, I don't think I actually read this one because at the time I was just so done with Dan Jurgens, which I, I was discussing with Tom earlier that, um, you know, in the last 10 years, whatever, uh, I've loved everything that he's written except for action comics. Yes. Um, uh, like, yeah, his, his newest run on action was just blah. Very much so. Yeah. But, um, but like you know, prior to that, his, um, his booster gold, his Thor, like it's just, right. It's amazing stuff. Yeah, it, it, you know, and, and you know, you think this is a guy who was you know writing, you know, was like the hottest writer uh, back when we were first reading, mm -hmm. and now he's you know now now he's you know part of the old guard. <laughs> you know, it's strange to think, but uh, no, his Thor run because I mean, growing up, I always kind of loved Thor, um, just this mythical god, giant hammer. Um, speaks in you know Shakespearean English, but uh, it was Dan Jurgens run that really gave me an emotional tie because he just really brought the emotion out of you know which I hadn't seen since going back now and looking at Kirby stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just really loved his stuff, but it's crazy to me that after Superman, he then went on to Thor. But I mean, the level of love that he brought to that Thor run yeah. started there. Really? Okay. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go back and read some more uh, 90 Superman. <laughs> Moving so. right along to 90 Superman. Um, this was the 
basically the pinnacle of the um, soap opera Superman. Uh, Lex Luthor was on trial for, uh, they finally, Lois Lane and Clark Kent had collected enough evidence to bring him to um, a jury trial. Um, but during the middle of this jury trial, um, Lex Luthor had a clone made of himself, <laughs> Lex Luthor 2. <laughs> you remember this. Oh, yeah, um, right. Red, red-headed, uh, the red-headed yeah, clone. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that they were pinning everything Lex Luthor's defense on um, this red-headed clone that was um, losing his sanity. It wasn't the actual Lex Luthor. It was just this clone. Um, Who it, went around as Lex Luthor Jr. Right. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> the fall of Metropolis um, was Lex Luthor Jr.'s final act of revenge. Um, he launches missiles. Um, you can see in the cover, that's the Daily Planet globe uh, hurtling down the street at Jimmy and Lois um, with Superman trying to stop it. Um, and then Lex eventually takes in um, the Matrix suit um, that regenerated Superman from whenever he died. Um, and went toe to toe with Superman in this Kryptonian battle armor. <laughs> so crazy, bonkers Superman, but it's amazing and probably my favorite arc that took place in the actual series itself. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, now everyone's gone to sleep. They're like Matrix suit, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm sad that we didn't include that in the play. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got the play. Yeah. Um, Man, should we include the link to the play? Oh, it's on the YouTube channel. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Brad, voice of God, will you, what do you think? I think I think we should find it. All right. Well, then yeah. uh, you'll find the link to it right here. Uh, it's uh, at, at any given moment. It's uh, our favorite thing that we've done, or our least favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. You know, like depending on what we had to eat that day, or, yeah. you know, if we slept the <laughs> right. night before. Yeah, we're all like, yeah, it was it was so it much was fun. So it was amazing. amazing. And then we'll look back and we're like, what were we thinking? <laughs> I mean, it, it was thrown together in two weeks. Or it was three about weeks? two weeks because it included costume builds and an actual rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, it we rehearsed twice before it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which we should have done like four or five times. <laughs> yeah. I agree. But thinking about it now, I think it would be a lot of fun if we did like a director's commentary <laughs> on the <this> thing. <laughs> Just have that playing while we provide yeah. insight and feedback, and the that was a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah, there there are parts of it that uh, that were pretty awesome, and then there are parts that well, you know, were terrible. I mean, right. uh, uh, the the subject matter that we we pulled from most of that's verbatim. Oh yes, mm-hmm. like I, I reread all the comics and and all the dialogue that's in it for the most part is. Uh, either exact or pared down and, and uh, uh, paraphrased. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Flowers as Luther Jr. was some of the best stuff. Yeah. Oh, and uh, George's, uh, you know, I'll stop doomsday with my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, anyway, let's uh, let's move along. We'll we'll talk about superhero school stuff uh, right after this. But, All right, yeah. uh, real quick, uh, Superman number one fifty five, Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis. Ed McGinnis draws one heck of a Superman. Uh, it's almost anime style, but it really just fits for him. And this is an issue where uh, Superboy is having some issues, so Superman takes him out to the Kent farm to you know get a lesson down on the farm. Uh, Superman All-Star number five, Grant Morrison, Frank Quietly, Clark Kent interviewing Lex Luthor in the um, prison after Lex Luthor has been. This is a separate out of continuity, but amazing. The entire thing's amazing, but this one issue out of all of it is yeah, what I'd recommend. All-Star Superman is absolutely one of the best Superman stories of all time. Like, it's absolutely the best. If um, anybody was to ask me to recommend, it would be, here's your 12 issues. Right. I mean, the, the easy to recommend Superman is, is Red Sun. Like that—that's the one that that everyone kind of goes to because it, it's an alternate Superman story, mm-hmm. and it's it's really the last three pages of that that makes it one of the most genius Superman stories of all time. Because up until then, it's it's good, mm-hmm. but those last three pages make it one of the best constructed Superman stories of all time. It really ties it together. Whereas uh, the All Star Superman series, uh, it Grant Morrison has this deep love of superman that uh 
you have to read four or five times to really understand, oh my God, he included that. Mm -hmm. He really meant this when he was saying these things. He was saying this, you know, like um, in it, he explains that uh, in one way or another, Superman will always exist for everyone. Yes. You know, and, and, you know, it shows uh, different iterations of Superman and then it even shows uh, Superman being drawn for the first time. Right. In and our was, world. It, and it was the, oh, Superman's real. Yes. You know, like it's the, no, Superman's real to us because of this, because, of, you know, mm -hmm. it's the wow. It's it's amazing. Um, read it, reread it, and reread it again. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving right along, Superman number 416. Um, <laughs> I just, the, the cover is what drew me in way back in the day, whenever, you know, you find a comic store and you just got to dig through all these back issues you never knew existed. But um, it has an amazing Lex Luthor story in it, um, where Superman uh, takes Lex Luthor and um, shows Lex Luthor what he could have been if he had done good instead of evil. And um, just really phenomenal issue, Superman 416. Highly recommend. Um, continuing on the Lex Luthor train, um, Adventure, Adventures of Superman 575, um, Mark Miller as well, uh, the writer of Red Sun, um, did this. And it was just an interesting dynamic because Lex Luthor, Clark Kent, and Lois Lane go to the theater. And um, Lex Luthor had hired an assassin to shoot him at the theater. Um, but what he did, and it blew my mind, um, Lex Luthor caught the bullet. Very Ozymandias, um, Watchman style, caught the bullet, blew my mind that they actually moved that into an actual comic, not just Watchmen. Huh. But it's a very good story. Um, it was one of those... I mean, it's even got a classic Superman drinks some milk that was poisoned by Luther <laughs> to get him out of the way. But because, of course, he's Superman, it has no effect. But he still does the, uh, uh, guys, I think my stomach hurts, just to play along. <laughs> nice. Yep. Now, th that's the era that, uh, that he ran for president, right? It is. Man, it is. imagine that... Uh, Crazy uh, uh, real estate mogul running for president, huh? I can't believe it. God. <laughs> Turns out to be a super villain. Anyway, uh, so uh, <laughs> other comics you have. Oh, um, these are some of my current go-to, top of the pile, read every, you know, read every month. Justice League. If you are not reading Justice League, Scott Snyder is just crazy pantsing it up while also... <laughs> um, Tying it in, um, there are references to Grant Morrison's uh, Justice League run. It's a follow-up of his Batman, um, the metal that he did. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's just, it's very 70s. It's not super friends, but you've got Superman doing his best Batman voice, but finding out that Wom Wonder Woman does it better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the first couple pages of the first issue... Uh, you know the the team are all uh, you know linked up, and they're all uh, you know talking like Batman, like doing their best Batman voice, <laughs> like you know, get them to the chopper. Let's you know, and, and they're like, oh man, your your Batman voice is way better than his. Wait, no, guys, guys, Superman does the best, and then you know Wonder Woman does hers, and everyone's like, nope, Diana wins. Yep, yeah, it's, it's amazing stuff. It's fun. Yeah. It's big adventure. It's I, I liken it to him spilling the toy box and doing the well. That's what I'm playing with. Yes, very much that. And, and it's the, oh, well, we got the Batman in the funny suit. Well, whatever. Here's the story of Batman in a funny suit. Let's do this. Right. You know, here's the reason that Batman's in a funny suit. And uh, Lex Luthor is um, top-notch villain again, which he hadn't been in for a long time. Yeah, he was actually a member of the Justice League for a... Uh, right. Yeah. Which but, was was a fun concept, but uh, you know what? <laughs> no. It's not Lex. Yeah. But... Uh, we're back to, you know, classic fun. Yeah, which, I, I mean, you know, Lex Luthor it, in the, the DC universe honestly should be the number one bad guy villain. Agreed. But, Agreed. Yeah. Uh, speaking of classic fun, uh, if you are a fan of the Fantastic Four, DC has answered that with the Terrifics. Um, My, how about this first time we've ever talked about this, the Terrifics? <laughs> That's Is it crazy. Not? <laughs> so maybe, maybe, just maybe, you guys have heard about this great comic <laughs> called Mr. Miracle? We, we haven't ever heard about this. Tell us about Mr. Miracle. It is amazing. Tom King um, doing, I don't know, it's just, it's amazing. It's a page turner. It's 
Um, you drink it in, and you're just shell shocked that this is coming from Mr. Miracle. But of course, I did have to pick the cover with my favorite Orion on it, which you will <laughs> yeah. see on the table as well. Hey, hey, Steve. Yes, sir. Dark side is. Dark side is. Yep. So yeah, we've uh, we've talked about that com. Uh, yeah, that that series. Um, I think every episode. Every episode. Maybe we've missed one, but we need to go back and rewrite that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll just uh, you know retroactively link it. Yeah. That, that that's no problem, right, Brad? No, we can do that. Easy. Yeah, totally. Easy. We'll just put yeah. in a graphic and be yeah. like, yeah. Mr. Miracle, <laughs> Mr. Miracle. I'll yeah. get a time stone and just yeah, it, make it, it happen. He'll, he'll find something else that we're recommending, and it'll be like the, you know, man, have you guys read Mr. Miracle? <laughs> 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 oh, but uh, continuing on the Tom King train, his current run of Batman is amazing. Um, issue 1 to 54, it hasn't missed a beat. Um, right. I mean, it's got everything you would ever want from a Batman comic. Um, I mean, even the Brave in the Mold, which was one of my favorite issues, where um, oh, him and Swamp Thing, him and Swamp oh, Thing, oh my god, they yeah. Up. So the my favorite moment of that was uh, uh, Swamp Thing's in the Batmobile, and he looks over to Batman and says, "Why do you have a car?" And uh, Batman looks over to Swamp Thing and says, "Why do you have a body?" <laughs> <laughs> You know, Swamp Thing's, you know, the right the the entity of all the, the, green. the green, yeah, of all the plant life on Earth, and you know, yeah, he's got a body, yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's fun that you know that, that you you bring that up because uh, Scott Snyder's run on Batman, what like when it came out, we were like, oh my god, this is the best Batman is going to be for the next like fifty years, right? The, Nothing is going to top this. And then immediately after, Tom King does this, and it's the oh my god, it it's better. Like right? it, I mean, I still love the the old stuff. I mm -hmm. absolutely love the old stuff, but it it it's better. And then Scott Snyder goes off on on Justice League, and it's the Oh man, how how much more of a perfect fit can we get on that? Right, I was shocked um, whenever they said Scott Snyder because he'd always written these dark and gritty Batman stories. Yeah, and just the I mean, there is some of that because of course you have Batman on the team, but all of the other players. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked at how well he made them mesh. Well, because uh, he did uh, Superman Unchained, right? Yes. Yeah, which was a very good Superman story. But uh, see, for me, I, I thought it was just okay. Like, like the the very first issue. I, I mean, it was a different Superman, of course. The very first issue was kind of the only time that Superman really did anything. Uh, super, super, yeah, right. Um, but just the moment of him calculating, you know, how to hold this building up as it's crumbling. Yeah, that was amazing, and you know, gave you some insight into which you don't normally get, other than. I'm going to do some good because, of course, there are a lot of lazy Superman writers. <laughs> um, you know, just what his method of thinking and what he's trying to do by doing what he's doing. Right. Um, for me, though, uh, Superman Unchained, the uh, World War II aspects and that Superman maybe wasn't the first alien to land was um, kind of an interesting uh, dynamic because Superman, uh, New 52 again, um, is meeting this older... Um, it, just more powerful, um, more experienced Superman. Um, so just seeing their conflict was fascinating. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I read it and liked it, but it, I, did, I just didn't love it, you know, because like... Same. I mean, it's not know. on my shelf yeah. of, you know, I have my very own, you know, picture of, you know, what is Superman continuity. It, it's not in there just because, unfortunately, the New 52 is not that great. Yeah, I, I mean, with that, I, I tell everyone pick out the Batman, pick out the Justice League, and kind of leave the rest. Right. You know, there there are a few things here and there that you know worked, but it, overall, it it kind of muddied the the waters. It did, and now they're trying to fix it with Rebirth. And mm -hmm. Well, and, and it, yeah, in my opinion, Rebirth has fixed so many the problems. What? Yeah, quite a bit. I couldn't sing the praises of Rebirth enough. Yeah, it, it, it's like New 52 came to, to repave the road, and there's nothing but potholes. Mm -hmm. And Rebirth is just coming in and filling them. Yep. So. It's been quite an enjoyable ride now. Yeah. Speaking of fixing some potholes, we have my final recommendation of New Challengers. Uh, it's Scott Snyder again, playing in a different uh, toy box of The Challengers, another Jack Kirby creation. Um, and he's mixing the old with the new and taking it to brand new heights. Um, 
trying to remember what it was exactly from this particular issue. Um, but it's just other Kirby concepts as well, um, which were just amazing to read. Um, and, and see, it, it's nice to, to hear that you recommend that, because I read the first one and thought, man, uh, this is a trope that I've, I've seen over right. and over that, you know, honestly, I, I, the, the word hot garbage came out of my mouth. Because <laughs> I was so excited, because, you know... Uh, it's Challengers of the Unknown. Challengers of the Unknown, which, you know, most people don't understand who or what they are. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they were the... Uh, scientific exploration team in, in the DC universe, like you know, mm-hmm. which is you know a lot of what I love with the Fantastic Four, and, and uh, I, I will say that Jack Kirby uh, may or may not have created uh, Challengers and Fantastic Four. Uh, I'm just going to throw that it, out. There. He did, <clears throat> um, yeah. <laughs> so I love Jack Kirby. Just got to get that one out there. Yeah. But um, with the new Challengers, um, the first issue was a bit of a stinker. Um, second, third, and fourth, it's really ramped up. Uh, it's only got two more issues, so I'm curious as to where they take it. But- yeah, because the the first issue, uh, it's all these people that get pulled out of time uh, right before they die, mm-hmm. and they get the the weird uh, hourglass symbol on their their forearm, and then there's the mysterious character that's like, "Hey guys, I pulled you all out for a special reason. You don't know what that reason is? Too bad." Tune in next week. Yeah. Well, next month in yeah, this case. And, but- and it was the. Pass. I'm done. <laughs> it gets better. I, I think that whenever this is uh, collected in a trade, top seller. Yeah, I, I mean, what 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 happens in in two? Like you know, like like just give me a little little taste to to you know fi- fix that uh, that bad taste in the mouth. Uh, you find out who the mystery person is, and the original challengers come back. Really? Yes. Ah oh, man. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's weird that it's that. That easy of a fix for me, but with the challengers of the unknown, it really is. Like uh, the the person that we find out that it is, are they important in the DC universe? Yes. Hmm. How important? Will it, will it spoil the story? The... It will spoil. Oh man! Oh no! I just really have to know. I'm sorry. Oh man! Is it Spectre? <laughs> I wish. Is it Detective Chimp? Um. Sadly, no. But read Justice League Dark if you are interested in the <laughs> new adventures of Detective Chimp. Which, uh, th- that's another one that I, I read the first one and was like, man, it's okay. Like, I love these characters, but man. Uh, yeah, and then uh, after the uh, the second issue, it's the, oh, hey, I'm back in. All right, right. Let's, let's go, guys. Right. Man, all right, so third and final guess. Is it Red Tornado? It is not. <sighs> it is man. not. All right, well, I have to read this new Challengers. Please do. I highly recommend. Man. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, well, Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I will. I will get it right on that. Um, let's talk about your uh, superhero school involvement. Okay, because um, you were uh, one of the original people. Like it, it was uh, you, Amy, Koji, and uh, Galen. Oh man, I almost forgot about Amy and Koji. But yeah, yeah. Um, geez, that's way back in that time machine. Yeah, and then uh, then Blaine started coming around, and, and mm-hmm. he brought some friends, and then, you know. And that's just kind of how it spiraled into what it is today, is, mm-hmm. you know, you just, you bring in one, and then <laughs> they bring in friends, and then they bring in friends, and now you have this entire troop yeah. of superhero actors. Family, I call them. The New World Family. Yeah. The New World Family. Huh? Yeah. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's that's honestly what it is. Like, you know, uh, we, we talk about the uh, the Amazo Award show mm-hmm. often enough, but, like, it's really kind of the, the annual family gathering. It uh, is. It, it's Hot luck of, and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. it's our little Christmas that we, that we do for ourselves. Like, do you remember the, how small the first Amazos was? We had, I do. We had 28 costumes for that. For that year, like we sat in a semicircle. Yeah, we did. It was so small. We did. Yeah. I remember the second year, maybe third year, whenever I came in, and there were just rows uh-huh. of seats. I'm just like, and now it's like standing room. This is a thing. Yeah. So I, I, I guess for for those that uh, you know have absolutely no, no clue of what we're talking about, we do the the superhero school uh, every week or uh, every other week here at the store, and I get my friends to dress up and act like uh, superheroes. Or super villains, mm-hmm. and um, we all have a real good time with it. And, and you know, it, it's it's kind of weird how close everyone gets because you know you're you're doing uh, acting and improv and you know just you know so much other stuff that that you rely on everyone and, and you're you're vulnerable. 
with I mean, everyone. You have to have a level of trust that mm-hmm. if you know you drop the ball with a particular character or a particular line, somebody's got to be there to pick it up. And I feel like you know the superhero school group does. Yeah. Um, and and you know not even just that. Like there's you know having to change your last minute you know. Right. Fix a costume or, <laughs> you know, trusting someone with uh, hot glue near your uh, uh, sensitive areas or safety pins. Or staples. Yeah, or staples. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. But um, so it, it's, you know, the Amazos are uh, kind of my way of saying thank you to everyone at the end of the year uh, where I give out awards for, like, best costume, best mm-hmm. performance, best ensemble, worst costume, <laughs> which, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, like, everyone... You know, naysay is the worst costume, but since I make most of the costumes, right. uh, I, I, uh, I'm happy to give it out to whoever <laughs> wore the worst costume I made. Right. Like, thank you for putting up with this horrible thing that I made. You did a fantastic oh job doing right. it. Right. And, and the, uh, the the trophies are, are, you know, cheap, but they mean so much to everyone. You they know, do. It's, it's crazy. Like, you, you have all yours in your office, right? Uh, they're actually currently in the home office um, with pictures and Funko Pops of those particular characters. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's yes. so cool. But yeah, like I, and I know that Carrie and Dre have all theirs, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, a really neat night where, you know, like, uh, it, it's kind of like our Oscars, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar to what, I mean... It really is. We need a red carpet. Uh, well, uh, you know, let's worry about the current one we have. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like the, uh, we we uh, uh, all get to vote on uh, which costumes we think deserve uh, mm-hmm. what category. And the very first year uh, that we did this, we had twenty eight uh, uh, costumes, mm-hmm. twenty eight different, co- and we were like, man, that's huge. Right. How are we going to do this? <laughs> yeah, the voting has gotten a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, and uh uh you know the the first year I uh, I took actual Amazo uh figures. Figures, you know, uh, for or the those super adaptoid. Yeah, uh so for for those that uh, don't know who Amazo is, he's the uh, DC villain who can mimic all the Justice League's powers. So we're like, "Oh, well, that's perfect for you know, right, somebody that wears, I think my number was 13 or 14 costumes yeah. mm-hmm. uh, that first year that we did the awards, and uh, we <laughs> capped it off by putting me in an Amazo costume. Uh, oh, it, no, it, uh, what, one of the, the thing was that uh, happy ticks giving. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, did. We're, we're, we dressed you up as the tick, and it was horrific. It was. Yeah, uh, which, uh, it, you know, we, we haven't done many pictures for this one. Uh, which Brad's like, whoo, thank God. <laughs> now we're doing all the pictures. So, all right. of you can them, find like that picture here, I hope. Um. <laughs> I'll find the picture. Yeah, yeah, it, it's somewhere. Um, but yeah, and then uh, after that, we, we really got serious with that. Uh, because, you know, we, we started off doing A is for Avengers, B is for Batman, C is for Captain America, uh, D is for Daredevil and Electro and yeah. yes, yeah, it, it got clunky real quick. Right on down the line, yeah. Z for T- Zatanna, yeah, and, and and yeah, I remember we we're like we're never gonna have Electro because she's an assassin. We're not gonna teach kids about assassin, <laughs> yeah. right? We've had her four times now, but uh, you know, like we found out that you know parents are like, no, you can say assassin in front of kids. like you know it's you know it's a real thing. Kids <laughs> are gonna find out one way or another, like this, bombs in their necks, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. There, yeah. There's some uh, some things for for superhero school. Are like, man, does this pass the TV Y seven thing? And then you know, we, we watch the cartoons. Like, somehow, yep, yeah, it does. Yeah, the kids are teaching us stuff. Yeah, nice. the, yeah. The kids are like, um, you know, when you shot that guy, and did, <laughs> we're like, what? Who taught you that? <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, you're you're. Uh, first character that we had you do was uh, actually predates uh, the superhero school. We we had you as Thor. Yes, uh, for a Thor, uh, not even a Thor movie. It was the Avengers movie. Uh, we were invited out to a movie preview. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, it, it was for the Thor movie, was it? Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, because all that predated uh, superhero school. I vaguely remember duct tape and uh at that point in time i did actually have long hair yeah um which would have put it back in the thor days um yeah because so. uh because the beans made you the uh, the knit thor cap yes they did and which, uh, 
Yeah, we we use that for your Thor helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because yeah, back then uh, I didn't really know how to do anything with foam, so everything was cardboard or duct tape or you know hot glue. You know, and my knit my knit cap was amazing. It stole the show. Yeah, uh-huh. um, it actually had knit wings and everything. Um, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and then uh, do you remember who some of your other first characters were? Really? Um, it was Thor. Uh, I was your go-to Thor for the longest time. Um, but then I remember um, shaved my head for Mr. Freeze for oh, Batman Day. Mm-hmm. Before that, I, uh, oh, yeah, no, yeah, uh, Batman Day was, was then. And then after that, when your hair started growing back, you I were did, Orion. I did become Orion uh, yeah, for which, uh, one of the O schools. Yeah, and, and that was the same day that we had Dan Panosian and uh, Dave Johnson. Yeah. Um. I don't think it was, oh, no, no, it, it, it was the same day. But, no, because uh, Red Tornado was that day. Right. But they, they put on your... Uh, yeah, they put on that amazing Orion helmet made out of cardboard. Yeah, but, um, which uh, I should have pictures of here. That's Dan Johnson okay. wearing an Orion uh, John- helmet. And, and, uh, or Dan Panoja. Like they're, they're, we have pictures of each of them. Yes, yeah. and I actually have a Dave Johnson Orion um, sketch from him. Awesome. Oh, wow. If you have a picture of it, we can post it right here. Here. <laughs> Uh, Brad, uh, Brad's like, you guys, <laughs> you're jerks, <laughs> making me work on this podcast. <laughs> I will find that. Um, but uh, no, that was, uh, gosh, those early days. Uh, I remember uh, we had the the kids doing activities, too, and then Thor throwing his hammer. Yeah. Oh, having yeah. the kids, you know, be worthy and throwing my hammer at a target. And and that was that was an interesting morning, that's for sure. Yeah, we uh, you know, as soon as we we surpassed thirty kids, we were like, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have kid activities with all these. And yeah, yeah, it, it got to be a little bit too much. Yeah, I I, I think what really killed it was uh, when uh, you know, the the start of the start of the end of the activities was when Jerry got stabbed with a kryptonite. Right, you know, if. A child finds a kryptonite <laughs> hunk yeah. of Grok. Um, of course, I, they're going to go after Lex. Right, movie. and then and then the 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 final nail in the coffin there was the uh, the time that uh, Ultron started getting jumped by all the oh, kids. Oh, that was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, jumped by all the kids or jumped oh, on it, it, it specifically was, by it was the instigator and then mm-hmm. like a, a couple other of the kids. Oh, that was a mess. Yeah, yeah. poor poor Ultron. Was that <laughs> McMurphy? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Zach. Yeah, Zach was our Ultron, which, you know, he, he handled it well. Cause, <laughs> he could you know, take it. He could well, take a beating. And, well, and, and halfway through, he, uh, you know, the kid's just kicking him while, he, you know, while they're lifeless. Uh, you know, because Ultron had just been, you know, shut down. Right, deactivated. Yeah. Good time to kick somebody when they're down, mm-hmm. right? Right. So then. Uh, we are super. Yeah. So, so then, uh, you know, like mid-kick, he looks up and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, the, that girl that was kicking him just you looked over and tears were just shooting out of her eyes. She was like, I'm not having a good time. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, justice. Right. Yeah. But, you know, uh, which, you know, most of the kids that, that come to these things are just amazing. They're awesome, oh, awesome yeah. kids. And then she was uh, something else. Yes. Yeah. She was. <laughs> but, uh... but, yeah, so one of my favorite moments uh, uh, involving superhero schools when I, I came to you and said, Hey, Steve, Mm -hmm. what do you think about being Superman? That was, I mean, you know, you don't ask Superman's biggest fan an opportunity to be Superman, especially whenever you're like, and we'll even make you a costume. And I'm just like, already sold. Already sold. Yeah, Um, because, you know, again, this is the cardboard duct tape day, so, like, I I put the bill to... uh, uh, Right. Um, Spandex costume, Superman emblem. Like, hand-sewn, everything uh, was... Cape, um, you know, it it was awesome. Uh, Unfortunately, lost to time, that Superman costume is. Um, I believe I lost it at the State Fair, believe it or not. Oh, my God. um, After the first con. Really? Yes, after the first New World Comic Con. uh, Because... Uh, the next time that I went to be Superman, I found my Superman boots, and the cape and the red underwear were rolled up in one. The other boot was empty. Oh, that's right. Because, uh, yeah, I had to uh, remake the S super last minute. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it, that's stuck to the back of the door beneath the uh, the poster. It's it. Yeah. I haven't noticed. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I hide things around here. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's, uh, I think I'm at 214 Spider-Man figures hiding 
in the store. Wow. Yeah. So if anyone ever wants to play hide and seek, uh, you know, Spider Man, that could be a fun game. Yeah. They're you know some are glued underneath shelves, some are hiding in yeah. plain sight, some are like the oh my god I didn't realize yeah that that there's a Spider Man figure. Yeah. Uh, that would be a fun activity for Spider Man Day. Yeah. Well, should they ever have one? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, but by then I'd, I'd have to tell everyone where they're. You know. That's true. That's true. You'd have to reveal. Yeah. I never. I never flat out tell anyone where anyone. Is, you know, where any one of the figures are. I leave it open for everyone to to find. So. But yeah. Um. I don't know. Any, any other superhero school stuff you want to? Uh... Um. So I've always played Thor or. Uh, Superman, these, you know, great characters, um, good examples of doing the right thing. Um, and then I was given an opportunity to play just a character out of left field for me, but a character that I've always loved, the Punisher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, you know, we, we were like, okay, we can trust Steve to play the Punisher and not, like... Right, you, you, you know, know death, kill, those things were off limits. Yeah. Um, so, you know, coming up with creative ways of saying that your family had been gunned down in a mob uh, crossfire, interesting nonetheless. But um, it was the first time that kids were actually intimidated um, <laughs> by me. Uh, Wait, it, which you, you didn't have a gun, like, there, you no. know. Yeah, like it was just you and the trench coat and the oh, shirt. I do take that back. I did have um, like a shiny um, oh, shotgun, yeah, but yeah. it had like the big orange tip and everything. Well, and, and yeah, it, and, and I was like, you you know, only keep it at your side. You never lift it. You never, you know. Like, right. Like, yeah, like we, we have the, uh, the, the rule with all of our customers. You never point a gun at any of the kids right. or, or each other. But, uh, you know, like it, it's just never done. Yes, but um, this was like maybe a year into superhero school. I'd done Thor a few times. I'd done Superman a few times here or there, Orion, but face covered. Um, but with uh, Punisher, we just slicked back my hair. Yeah, and I uh, uh, threw on a scar. Well, yeah, I, I, and uh, I, I uh, took a sharpie and I, I wrote my uh, thumbs together with it, uh, you know, to to get it to where mm -hmm. I can smear it. And I, I darkened slightly underneath your eyes and then gave you kind of heightened cheekbones. Yes, which kind of gave me like a skull thing, but very subtle. Yeah, like, like uh, I mean, you wouldn't really look at, at you and do that. Oh, he's got markings on us. It was the... Right. It was just... It was so very subtle. It was subtle. shadowed. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, but, Buck, you tell it better than I do, the kid's <laughs> reactions. Yeah, so he comes out and like there's this quietness that that came across the 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 kids because they're they're getting pretty rambunctious and all of them just sat up straight mm -hmm. and were like um par pardon me sir <laughs> i have a question for you <laughs> sir <laughs> <laughs> and this was during the more rambunctious days of the kids too. Oh, yeah yes. yeah the, it, and and all the kids called you sir yes <laughs> <laughs> it, it <was> just <laughs> um but after after um, the school, whenever we're you know meeting all the kids, getting pictures and everything like that, um, it, a parent actually came up to me after taking a picture with me, looked at me like two or three times, and was like, "You're Superman." Yeah. It, it, the, oh dear God, you're the guy that plays Superman. Right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you take a picture of me as Superman here yeah. and a picture of me as Punisher here, it's night and day. Yeah, it, it was uh, pretty it was amazing. Great, yeah, it was a great transformation. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. When the, when the adults couldn't tell, it was the oh, we're doing something right. We did it well. So uh, I think that the uh, worst costume that I ever made you put on uh, was Hellboy. <laughs> was it really though? Really? Well, okay. I so, think I don't know. About well, that. okay. Here's here is everything from my perspective because I was the one getting you into costume. I That's true. I remember that so fondly. So we were trying to get everything together, and uh, nothing was going right on the costume. So you're like, "Just hot glue things to me. Just hot glue <laughs> it to me. I can take it. Let's do it. Just staple this in. I'm good to go." I'm like, "No." So you made me put hot glue on the Hellboy horns yes. and hot glue them. To your forehead. But, yes. But hot glue right? is fine. It's latex. No, well, hold, here's the thing. The hot <laughs> glue that we were using was just boiling. So you had uh, mild blisters uh, from that. And then, turns out Steve here is allergic to latex and didn't tell me. So to seal the, uh, the, the horns, I put down some liquid latex. 
That was an interesting uh, removal process. <laughs> yeah. That is for sure. So uh, here's a picture of Steve as Hellboy. Um, and then probably half an hour, 45 minutes after, uh, I go in back and you're like, hey, Steve, uh, how's that makeup coming off? And he looks like this. Uh. And it's the most <laughs> horrific thing I've ever seen come out of that bathroom. It was pretty horrible. It was it I was, was just like, oh my God, we need to get you to the hospital. And he said, most of it's the the, the paint. Right, because it was red paint covering, you know, the blistering uh, Yeah, skin. but then the, uh, I found out later how much of that was blood. Yeah. It, yeah. It, uh, it could have been better, but uh, hey, it could have been worse. Yeah, you, you walked around for like two weeks with like little crescent moons <laughs> on your forehead. <laughs> just explain, no, I was Hellboy. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Work was interesting during that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, we did get that really good picture with you and Father Shane. Oh, that was the best. Uh, yeah. Where you're with the uh, dirt devil and he's just looking disapproving. <laughs> you know, for good measure, we'll throw it in here. <laughs> Take that, Brad. <laughs> so many pictures now. Yeah. Show's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I mean, honestly, uh, pretty close to. Uh, is there anything else uh, superhero school you wanted to get to? No, I think that was it. Those are some good times. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to do much this year, but uh, we'll make sure see to you around throw you in. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But um, there, there is one store story. Well, there's several store stories that uh, <laughs> we should get to uh, with you. Um, you know, we 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 can tease the one of you running through the table. That was um, probably the reason I have neck pain today. Oh, I mean, you're not. This isn't going to be the only time you're going to be here, right? Oh no, because there are too many stories and too I, much we have to talk about. Oh, yeah. quite a bit. I mean, there, there's the the time that you threw the trash can across the the <laughs> store. Uh, all right, so um, we'll we'll tease one now, and we'll have to do like a follow up one with just store stories. Okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm I'm down, but um, so. Uh, you know, you, you've been helping out here for a, for a while. And then, uh, every night that we would, uh, get done pulling comics, you know, way back when mm -hmm. we'd all, uh, get together and go out to eat. Right. Hop in my car, go out to eat. Yeah. Random place every single time. Yeah. And, and it was, you know, you, me, you know, and two to five other people. Oh yeah. You know, so it, it was usually about that. And, you know, sometimes it's kind of the same people. Sometimes it's just you know, vastly different people. Mm -hmm. But um, this one particular Tuesday, uh, it, it was raining really, really hard. And, um, like, no one was coming in. Like, it was just torrential rain constantly. And this baby blue stretch limo pulls up in front of the store across uh, the uh, parking spaces mm -hmm. uh, right in front. And this guy uh, gets out. You know, runs through the rain into the store and is just soaked. He says, hey, do you all buy video games? I said, no, not really. You know, because, you know, we don't, like. Right, you don't it. carry them. But there was this new Tomb Raider game that was out that I was like, man, I'm dying to play it. I'm hearing great things. He had one in his hand. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, all right, man. Normally I don't do this, but how much for the Tomb Raider game? He's like, oh, man, give me 10 bucks. So $10? Ten dollars, brand new game. Right. Yeah, I'm in. Let's do this. Oh man, I was so excited because you know, again, I had heard only amazing things about this. So uh, you know, the guy uh, you know hands me the game, and then he uh, you know like, he looks outside. Man, it's not going to get any better. And he runs off, like runs back into his car. <laughs> and uh, the girl that was uh, working for me at the time looked at me and she said, "You probably should have checked the disc." I was like, "It's fine. Trust people." <laughs> right so i uh i open it up and it's chumba wumba's tub thumping <laughs> i was so mad oh yes oh my god i was oh man the uh not family friendly words that were coming out of my <laughs> mouth oh yeah i it, Oh my god! <laughs> so, um, yeah, just all day I was just fuming over this thing, and I was you know, anyone that was coming in, I was like, "Can you believe this? This injustice in the world?" <laughs> yeah. So uh, it turns out that it was a uh, uh, you know early May, and uh, later that evening there were tornadoes. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Live, lives were lost, uh, homes were lost, people were devastated. And uh, suddenly, all of a sudden, that didn't matter. I thought, oh, man, what a jerk I've been. I can't believe that, you know, like, oh, man, you know, oh, I wasted $10 on a, you know, thing that doesn't matter at all. So, right. you know, you had Perspective the, was given. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, we, we got done pulling comics and we're like, hey, do we want to go? You're like, yeah, let's let's all just kind of hang out and be with each other. Uh, and you're like, hey, bring that CD. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to love it. So, um, yeah, for the next two years. Two years. You had to get your money's worth. Every week. Because, you know, it, you, you, you were gracious enough to always drive. Uh, for two years, every week, you would play Chumbo Wumba's Tub Thumping <laughs> on repeat. <laughs> on repeat. Yeah, as loud as we could. <laughs> Typically windows down windows so everybody down, else could so enjoy it Everyone too. else, yeah, which was really fun at stoplights where, you know, where uh, the song would end and you just replay. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it actually got to the point where if, you know, which restaurant we were going, like the Chinese restaurant on South Meridian, it was like, that's three and a half uh, tub thumpers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it, and every time that it comes on, it's the, no, sit back and uh, enjoy what you have. Absolutely. You know, don't be a jerk. So, yeah. And uh, you know what? Honestly, I think that's a great place to end this. I uh, agree. Yeah. So, uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, sorry for those that uh, don't get to watch this, that don't get to see all these amazing pictures that Brad graciously uh, uploads for us. Thank you, Brad. Painstakingly. Yeah, painstakingly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell everybody where the store is, Buck. The store is in Oklahoma City at 6219 North Meridian Avenue, just south of Northwest 63rd Street. Uh, I have been Buck Berlin, uh, owner operator of New World Comics. With me is Stephanie Cerny. And uh, Voice of God, Brad Reed of Nerds to Men fame. Uh, find it uh, pretty much everywhere that you can find New World Comics Podcast. Uh, like and subscribe to this page. And Steve Kerr, thank you so much for being part of this. Happy to be here. 